Joining us right now is Greg Fleming. He's the president and CEO of Rockefeller Capital Management. He's also the former president of Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. And Greg, this is an interesting time. We're going to be listening awfully closely to see what uh, Fed Chairman Jay Powell has to say today. Um, you think the prepared remarks we just heard, I don't think that's going to be what moves market, but, but, but potentially anything he says in response to the questions he's thrown could. Uh, what, what do you expect from him today? You think he's going to walk a pretty fine line? Yes, Becky, good morning, and it's great to see you again. Um, I think that uh, he, he's uh, juggling uh, very challenging things on all sides. Uh, the market backdrop is, as you all know, as positive as anything we've seen in a long time. And in fact, this bull market so far has grown faster and higher from the bottom than any bull market uh, in the post-World War II era. So markets are very robust, driven by two things. One, uh, what I've been calling a, a slingshot economy. It really is moving forward here very quickly, and you all have been talking about that on the show. The levels of GDP growth that we're going to see, are seeing and will see in the second half of the year into next year, uh, really unprecedented in, in modern time. And then secondly, and this gets us to Chairman Powell, the, uh, the macroeconomic uh, moves that the federal government through fiscal spending and the Fed on monetary policy have made to reinforce the uh, overall growth and return uh, from the pandemic. Uh, so he's got quite the, the trick in, in terms of uh, balancing uh, all that's been brought to bear here, and it has been unprecedented, uh, multiples beyond what happened uh, coming out of the credit crisis, trying to start peeling, peeling that back and at the same time, um, you know, balancing it against uh, not wanting to, uh, to do anything to slow the enormous growth that's coming forward. And also, he's now got uh, the focus on inflation, which is a big one. So all of that said, what does that mean for the markets? I mean, we've been bumping up against new highs and are doing it on a pretty regular basis. Is that justified based on what you think is going to happen? You know, the market backdrop is really as good as it gets. I mean, you've got uh, accelerating growth across a large swath of the economy. That's going to be true also outside the U.S. increasingly going forward. The vaccines have really helped, uh, obviously, quell the pandemic. So that's on one side. And on the other side, you have unprecedented, extraordinary measures on both fiscal policy by the federal government and, and talk of more, uh, as well as uh, the Federal Reserve having done uh, things in, in terms of the size of their balance sheet, obviously, the zero rate policy that uh, we've never seen before either. So I think the market backdrop for the remainder of this year into 22 uh, uh, stays very positive. But as good as it gets, I mean, that's what makes people nervous, right? If, if Powell suddenly starts sounding like they're going to start tapering soon, which would be anticipated given the strength of the economy we've seen to this point, how nervous will that make the markets? How nervous should that make investors? Well, you know, what he has in front of him here, as well as the federal government, but he's really balancing both, is a, is a very tricky uh, process going forward of making sure that inflation doesn't accelerate and him taking rates up to uh, to try to get ahead of that. And, and you've seen, obviously, they've started thinking uh, more aggressively about that and sooner in the last couple of weeks. He can't go too far there because on the fiscal side, because the, when you look at the size of the debt in our economy now, uh, debt to GDP or any ratio, and you look at interest payments on uh, that debt, the interest payments are really not up a lot, despite the fact that the debt is up significantly over the last 10 years because of the, the rate environment. As rates go up, uh, interest payments as a percentage of that federal budget, and this will, by the way, be happening at a time when baby boomers are retiring and Social Security and Medicare get more expensive. The, the, uh, the challenge from a fiscal standpoint, if you have interest payments get close to 10 percent of the budget, you add in uh, Social Security and Medicare uh, becoming increasing parts of the equation, that, that's going to put a lot of pressure on uh, the fiscal side of the equation. So he wants to get rates up to make sure that he doesn't have uh, uh, inflation kicking in. But he doesn't want them up too high because uh, if they get too high, he's got challenges on the fiscal side. And, and that, that, that would... I'm sorry? Well, is that kind of the third unofficial mandate of the Fed at this point? They have to worry about full employment, they have to worry about inflation, and they have to worry about whether we can afford to service our debt? They, that's the position they've been put in. 
because the reality is we've been adding uh, to the debt and running deficits where the Fed is an important part of funding those deficits. So going forward, if, you know, if rates were to, to, to go two or 300 basis points from here, you would have interest on the, on the federal debt uh, get close to or, or above 10% of the budget, you add Social Security, Medicare into that, and there is not a lot left over. So he's trying to balance that, uh, and he obviously needs to get ahead of inflation here. Um, I actually think they did a pretty good job in the language uh, last week. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people saying, what are they doing, and do they, do they see the different price pressures in the economy, and are they going to react? And they, they came out, and they did say they're starting to see it. They did say they're going to start moving it forward, and they are trying to thread this. They can't just jump in and say rates are going to go up uh, for um, you know all the reasons we're talking about here uh, uh, too quickly because he's Great. trying to strike a balance. He's in a, a quite yeah. tight box when you look I, at I mean, all the different things. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.